We welcome all of you joining us by television and those of you joining us at airjesus.com. Stay tuned to today's message. We're doing part four, part four of controlling your flesh, part four, controlling your flesh. And I would like to read just a little humor that I came across this week. A young woman was taking an afternoon nap. After she woke up, she told her husband, I just dreamed that you gave me a pearl necklace for Valentine's Day. What do you think it means? You'll know tonight, he said. That evening, the man came home with a small package and gave it to his wife. Delighted, she opened it, only to find a book entitled The Meaning of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Open your Bible, if you will, to the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter 5, the book of Galatians, chapter 5. We've been uh, reading from our primary text in 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 27. And so I wanted to uh, also read this little passage from Galatians chapter 5, which also deals with controlling your flesh. Galatians chapter 5. Let's look at verses. We'll read verses 16 through 26, beginning at verse 16, and we'll just read down through the end of the chapter. Galatians 5, beginning with verse 16. Read in unison with me. Ready? Read. This I say then. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, Murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. That means some more stuff he just didn't include. He <laughs> means everything else that goes along with these things is what he's saying. Everything else relating to the pleasures and the enjoyments of the flesh, you can stick in this category. He says, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the, spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. There it is, temperance is self-control. We're talking about controlling, controlling your flesh. Temperance against such, there is no law, and they that are Christ, notice this, verse 24, and they that are Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And we can stop right there, but we're, we're doing part four of uh, controlling your flesh. So I've, been just, I've been just calling out different areas um, in an attempt, or in an effort to just highlight different areas that our flesh same way the Apostle Paul did here in Galatians. He just went through and started highlighting areas that, are, that get out of control with the flesh, and he showed the work or the byproduct of the flesh, what it'll lead you to and what it'll lead you in. And so I've been doing something very similar, just calling out different areas that we have to control, bring in discipline and control. Um, I believe uh, something we need to do sometimes, we, have to, we need to cut off the TV sometimes. Our flesh, that's an area, entertainment, our flesh will lead us to an overindulgement of, of entertainment. And, and so 
you know, statistics say people watch TV sometimes six to eight hours a day so we can eat up our time, we can eat up our productivity, we can eat up our usefulness, we can eat up our purpose in life sitting in front of the tube. You know, your whole day, you can lose a whole day sitting in front. Don't, don't you feel stupid when you do that? You just, you've been there eight hours and you realize, yeah, I don't waste it I wasted a whole day. So cut the TV off, cut the, you know, sometimes we need to, the, the internet is another vice. Um, and, and I'm not saying everybody, some people use the internet very productively, some people are working, but other people are just on Facebook and MySpace, you're just chatting in all these chat rooms and so, you're just wasting time. You turn your name and say, you're wasting time. <laughs> and so sometimes our flesh can, can get an overindulgence in that, and we just waste all our time on social media, we're just surfing, we're browsing, we're just losing our lives in the flesh. It'll, it'll drive you, and, and, and you can't even go a day without the Internet. You start shaking. If you can't get to the Internet, you can't plug in. You, start, you have to shake. And so that's because of flesh. Uh, it'll, it'll lead you in these overindulgences and things that will utterly um, try to control our lives and really, really get us in bad shape. And so that was one of the things that I just wanted to call out, not pointing fingers. And, and, and keep in mind, I'm, I'm also preaching to myself. I've said that since day one of this series, everything that I call out, I'm also preaching to myself. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's preaching to himself as well. You know, there are times, uh, you know, pastors preach to other people as if it doesn't apply to them. No, this applies to me as well. I have struggles. I need to discipline my flesh in all these areas and control my flesh just as I'm telling you. So I'm preaching to myself, preaching to the choir as well. <laughs> all right, so uh, cut the TV off and do some things. Learn to control your flesh. Do some things. Read. Begin to read. Read. Spend some time thinking. Get a, get a notebook, call it an idea notebook. Jot down the reason you don't have ideas because you're in front of that TV. You don't, have, you, don't, you, don't give, you don't give God time to flow ideas into your life. Get an idea notebook. Spend some time. Just sit quietly a couple of hours. Write down ideas. Get an idea notebook. Think, think, plan, read, study, grow, work on yourself. You uh, make use of your time where it's productive, where it's productive in your life. And so that's an area you really have to control your flesh because if you don't, you'll fritter away all of your time through enjoyment and entertainment and, and all of these other things. I was talking to a lady one time. She says she, says she watches TV to 2 a.m. every night, every night. She, just, she said, I have to have it on. It, she said, it puts me to sleep, and then I wake up and look at it while it watches me sleep. I'm looking at it. <laughs> and so that's, that's an that's a area that I just wanted to, I just wanted to shout out. Give a, I'm giving a shout out to that. <laughs> but I'm shouting out different areas that, that we have indulges. All right, well, we, we, we've highlighted some things. We talked about things that we eat, where we get out of control. We talked about addictions. Drinking, smoking, drugs, and so forth, where our flesh gets out of control. We've talked about, uh, we began talking about disciplining our flesh, um, where sexual urges are concerned. Because we all have sexual urges, and they're natural urges, and they, they have to be controlled and kept in the place where God intended us to have the freedom and the enjoyment of them. They're beautiful in their proper place and in their proper context. It, it, sex urges is, is sort of like fire in the fireplace, you know. Long as fire is in the fireplace, it's beautiful. Oh, you can cuddle by it, you can roast marsh, marshmallows in it, you can warm yourself. It, it creates a beautiful atmosphere, it warms the room, it's, it's so serene and peaceful and delightful, and you can enjoy a nice fireplace. But if that fire gets outside of that fireplace, <laughs> it, it turns into a different creature, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, something that's so beautiful in one setting, but outside of that context, it'll destroy your house. It'll burn your house down. And so sex is the same way. In the context in which God created it to be enjoyed and the pleasure, you know, it's beautiful. But it, outside of that context, it becomes a destructive force that can bring your life to ruin.